Yeah, it's a boat. There's a boat over there. Is it a pirate ship? It looks like. Could be. <laughs> kind of nervous. My heart is kind of pounding. Oh, I see it. Yeah. It's like a motorboat. Yeah. Is anyone trained in self defense? I'm not. And um, we couldn't really understand what they're saying, and now there's a little boat coming out towards us. We're sailing 450 miles downwind from Karyaku to Curaçao, which is part of the Dutch Caribbean. And we're actually only about 100 miles away from the coast of Venezuela. Uh, and there's a load of islands just north of the coast of Venezuela. A lot of people told us to give the country a bit of a wide berth. There's a lot of political instability for a long time and as a result out of desperation there's quite a few pirates that patrol these waters supposedly um, i don't know if they'd pick on a little sailing boat like us or whether they're interested in big merchant navy boats but we have given it a bit of a wide berth because just to stay safe really who knows um but there are some islands very close to bonaire which is the first of the dutch islands which are part of venezuela but they're uninhabited and they look really cool so we might swing by and have a little look on the way you're not scared of pirates i don't think there'll be any pirates there i think i think it's too far but i mean we'll see i don't think they'll bother us if they if they see us i think we'll be all right Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, it's more grey. Then it's a grey day, so I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's more fluid or something in the Caribbean. But I don't really know. We've only been here for a day. Got to wake up at 5 a.m. and then have watched the sunrise and take my shift and it's been really good sailing downwind the whole time so I've enjoyed it a lot and then we caught a fish today well they caught you guys the guys caught a fish I guess I, mean, I just watched it happen got some good fillets <laughs> and we're gonna cook them for dinner some marinating in some lime juice and then I made some lunch earlier and like spilled it all over the floor so I'm just getting used to you know hitting everything and spilling everything so yeah I think it's I think it gets better but it's just really really fun time really really peaceful out here I haven't seen like any other boats at all it's just one other boat so yeah it's been really nice and we haven't seen land at all either yet It's been so smooth today, which has been really nice. It's been really, really hot as well, but the breeze has been like really light and it's been quite enjoyable because we've kind of had a break from rolling around really, really a lot. And then also the rain was quite intense for the past few days. So we've had a break from the rain and you know, it's really peaceful. I feel like I've become one with the sea now. I'm like, I could probably breathe underwater at this point. So just like leave me here just, maybe i should jump in um and then i opened my co first coconut today during my morning shift like my morning watch and that was pretty exciting it was delicious we drank it and then i like shaved it all out and I'm making a souvenir i don't know i'm just trying to find ways to entertain myself <laughs> But yeah, no, it's been really, really good. Oh yeah, we lost a fish today. So that was pretty fun. <laughs> we were just reeling it in this morning and like fucking mahi mahi this big. And he just flapped right off of the 
off of the line or yeah right off the hook he just got loose and like all day we haven't gotten anything else but that's okay Harry and and I was there for like emotional support uh, you win Sammy Lisa we had a good one yesterday yeah, a we also put up another sale, a bigger sale for in the gym. We took down the sale and then we put up the bigger one that's also thinner. So we catch more wind because the wind was kind of light today, but that was quite fun. So we've been kind of like on this yellow line. And this is pretty much the progress we've made today, like here to here. And then that's what we have left. So we're like more than halfway, which is really exciting. It's just really nice sailing, like the sea is flat. I guess the, the Caribbean islands block all the swells, so here you just have black-ish seas. And it sort of looks like a gulf, like it looks less like the Atlantic, where there's big rolling swells and it's more flat, like a gulf. And the water's a little bit of a different colour, but it's nice. <laughs> Got so much fish, we're trying to preserve some of it. Um, so we salted it and curing it in the sun. Um, and we also down with the fridge. The solar panel the panel fell off the back of the boat. So we're conserving power. Yeah, we've just got one on one solar panel at the moment. This is the third one, and the biggest one yet. Really? What do you think? I'm trying to get as close as possible. This is definitely an important skill to learn. I've never filleted, fill, filleted such a big fish. It's looking good. There's literally no sign of any other life besides us. So, no pirates. I mean, there's this actually, this is the only life. There's like a small island that's part of Venezuela. Los Aves is like less than 10 miles from here, but um, we still can't see it. So we're, and we were gonna stop, but we decided we're not gonna stop there. Um, it's not a good idea, I guess, to stop in like Venezuela. And uh, we should, we're just gonna follow the rules and go straight to Curacao from here, which means we might arrive at night, but um, we'll just figure out how that'll go when we get there, I think. I remember reading about that that, was, that island was full of birds. There's so many different kinds of birds and that you can hear them all night and stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of birds actually lately. We've, I've been seeing a lot of birds, but now I don't see any right now, but there was like a ton of birds this morning. All like, looks just like seagulls. I know it does actually looking at the island I'm seeing so many birds so I can see how it has earned its name there's seriously they're flying all over the place and then also Harry said he's surprised that no one lives there because it looks quite beautiful it looks like Teletubby land so Teletubby, Teletubby, Teletubby land. So we've been sailing for three days from Karakou in Grenada to Curacao. And this is the first bit of land we've seen, which is this island, small island um, near Venezuela called Los Aves, which is means the birds. And the reason that we're not gonna stop here, which is like, it, we thought long and hard about stopping. Um, and we thought that it would be quite nice to go and just stop for a little bit and for a swim, but we're not going to stop because there's a chance that we could run into the Venezuelan Coast Guard or the customs and we would not be legally entering the island. So that's a risk. And then another risk would be encountering pirates, which this is actually, this area is known to have pirates. So we haven't seen any other boats or anything, but it is a risk. So yeah, we decided that we're just going to pass by and admiring it from a distance is nice as well. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 
Do you see the birds? I don't fancy running, to be honest. Apparently they're really friendly, but... I think that's if you're there legally. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So I think you need a permit to go to... You need to, you need to pay, like, how much money to go to these islands. Yeah, it's a boat. There's a boat over there. Um, I didn't see that before. Is it a pirate ship? It looks like... Could be. <laughs> it's kind of nervous. My heart is kind of pounding. <laughs> Does it look like they're coming for us? No, they're in the anchorage. No, I think they're coming for us. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, you want it to be drowning? No. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I don't, are they in the anchorage though? Because I thought the anchorage was on this side. Oh wait, no, I guess it's around. What sort of boat is it? Can fucking tell. Are we at risk? Should I hide all the valuables? Stow away the money? We've got loads of... <laughs> Fish. We've got loads of fish we can offer to them. What if they take our salt fish? <laughs> it's okay, we'll catch another one because apparently Mahi Mahi is on tap. <laughs> oh, I see it. Yeah. It's like a motorboat. Yeah. Is anyone trained in self-defense? <laughs> I'm not. We're getting further and further away from Los Alves. And um, it was a little scary there for a second. We saw a couple of the smaller motorboats that, you know, could be potential risk for us. So as we get farther away, I feel more comfortable that we've kind of like eliminated the risk and that there's nothing that's gonna come after us, no one that's gonna come after us. And then um, Max just said, yeah, fuck stopping there. And I think I agree with that right now. <laughs> but maybe we shouldn't have come so close to the island. I'd recommend that other people who are going on this kind of passage have like a wider breach like we did at first we were actually sailing quite far from all the islands where the bigger risk is um there wasn't supposed to be as much of a risk over here so we thought that we would scope it out but i think making the right decision like we, i think that we made the right decision by kind of staying far away and just going past it and then also we've been keeping watch all together and making sure that we eliminate any risk that we can. Just had an exchange with the Coast Guard uh, in kind of broken Spanish. And we couldn't really understand what they're saying and now there's a little boat coming out towards us from the uh, Venezuelan island.
we got stopped by the Venezuelan Coast Guard. Because I guess we were just like, we were in their waters, we were just too close, we were in sight, and we didn't have a radar, so they thought that we were up to no good. Um, and then they pulled up right to the boat, and they, one of the guys, like, what is it, Comandante? The Comandante, the commander, came on board and um, was just just taught, like telling us that we needed to do an inspection. Um, we had to go to Aves de Sontevento with him so that they could do an inspection there. And we tried to get him to let us do the inspection um, while we were, you know, in the water. But we had to like quickly take the sails down. It was crazy. We were, we were turning north. They were telling us, go north. These guys pulled up in this boat that was like, not an official looking boat whatsoever so we were really sketched out at first and they had like these giant machine guns and um and like this really yeah the boat was just in terrible condition and their engine was just gone to shit so it was a little bit yeah it was a little bit sketchy at first and then after they came on the boat um everything was kind of cool the guy was like nice but then he was just like hitting on me a lot and he asked me if I wanted to marry him and he was uh he was um very forward in that way so that was interesting and um I was pretty nervous so we're just trying we're just trying to be nice and you know trying to get this inspection over with as quickly as possible so that we can continue going to Curacao and not end up stuck in Venezuela but um luckily Max used his um like some some of his spanish skills and was able to get by with communicating just a bit which was actually perfect and then um and then he was inviting us out for drinks when we came there and that we should all have we should all have dinner with him and his friends and all this stuff and then um so then we anchor the boat um at exactly where the coast guard told us to anchor and then another one of his colleagues came on board and he was going through everything and he was like checking our passports our documents everything that we had on board going through all the cabinets and all that kind of stuff and then um as they're leaving they asked for a gift so max gave them a couple bottles of gin and then they said, well, wait, we need a photograph. And you know, he was like asking, he's like, you're my wife, you're my love to me. And he was like, you're, you're mi amor and, and, and mi corazón. And then he's like, we need a picture together, please uh, photograph, like let's take a picture together. And so um, as, as their like Coast Guard boat is pulled up next to ours and the fenders are all out and they're holding on to the boat, they're snapping pictures. Yeah, no, I mean, it was funny, but then they were trying to say, to stay on a mooring ball there, and like, can we stay longer? And um, and I was basically like, I know I wanna get out of here. And I think that the guys were on the same page and we all just like, we just kind of told them, no, sorry, you know, we're, we're on the way, you know, we're, we have our route, we're plan, like we have our plan and we're gonna go to Curacao. And so um, we just, picked up the sails immediately and went on our way. It was like a whole, probably like three or four hours, you think, total? Yeah, like three or four hours total. Um, and we had to motor, like use the engines to go all the way to the island, which was about like three miles away. So Six. It was six? Oh yeah, wow. Yeah, we had to, we had to use the engines for six miles um, just to get to the island and then, just so that we could anchor there and then they could just get on the boat, so. Yeah, it was quite an ordeal, but um, we quickly got back on, back, got the sails back up and then just kept going with our course. And now we're really close to Curacao. It's really good. I'm really happy that we didn't stay. <laughs> it was fucked up situation a little bit, but it was really funny. And like, you know, it's all just part of the experience. I think the lesson is um, we probably, unless we actually wanted to visit Venezuela, we should probably just stay out of the water entirely because the, I don't know, you could tell that those guys are kind of desperate and they wanted something, like they're asking for money, they're even asking for like food and cakes. Like yeah, they actually asked us for cakes and, um, and I think it was probably a bit of a mistake for us to just sail right across one of their islands. Um, and luckily there were all nice people and there was no trouble, but,
I guess the issue with Venezuela is there is a lot of desperation and there is a lot of piracy and there is a risk and it was just kind of like stupid enough to start in that situation. But it was alright. But it was definitely a learning experience. And now we just arrived in Curacao or we're just sailing in Curacao and there's dolphins everywhere. Um, and we sailed past Klein, Curacao, which looks very really nice. And I've been practicing my Dutch, getting ready. Ganya Netherlands Sprecher. So pretty much. What else do you know? <laughs> Nay. Ganya Netherlands Sprecher? Nay. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to learning more. After our scary encounter with the Venezuelans, we arrived in Curacao the next day. We dropped our anchor in Spanish water, made the most of our dwindling supply of provisions before radioing the Coast Guard to arrange our PCR tests. Stay tuned for the next update where we explore this exciting new island, take on another crew member and continue our voyage across the Caribbean Sea. Wow, what a lesson we learned there. If you want to see more of the adventures on board Elixir then head over to our channel, click subscribe and we'll see you there.